Creepy internet mysteries are everywhere nowadays, from Cicada 3301 to cryptic subreddits and Twitter accounts to unexplained YouTube videos. The explosion of social media in the last decade has laid the foundations for these kinds of inexplicably creepy mysteries to spring up and gain popularity. Most of these can usually be explained by pranksters or someone going out of their way to create fear and panic, and maybe this one falls under that motive. However, the results, from media attention to government interest to massive speculation on Reddit, make this one of the weirdest, creepiest and most layered mysteries on the internet in the last 10 years. 11BX1371, also known as Red Lips Like Tenth, The Plague Mask Video and Kill the President, caused a huge stir in the online community in late 2015 after a series of DVDs and links were shared, leading to an extremely unnerving video. But what does it mean? Was it really a threat to the president by terrorists? Was it the work of one or several psychopaths? Or was it just a big prank or hoax? Well, one thing's for sure, whoever was behind it went to great lengths to make it seem authentic, and there may be more to this than meets the eye. In October 2015, a Swedish technology blogger by the name of Johnny, who wrote articles for the website GadgetZZ, published an ominous post entitled, This Creepy Puzzle Arrived in Our Mail. Obviously, the internet nowadays is always hungry for creepy mysteries, thanks to the likes of Cicada 3301, but this one was a bit different. In the update, Johnny explained that he had been sent an international package containing a CD-ROM with unintelligible writing on the top of it. Ignoring the safety concerns surrounding the opening of unsolicited media, he played the CD. What he was greeted with was a creepy DVD menu featuring pictures of bones and skulls, with the title at the top reading 11BX1371. The DVD menu was also coupled with unsettling distorted audio and the option to play the video. Upon proceeding, Johnny would have been more than a little surprised with what he was greeted with, as a video featuring a road figure in a plague mask starts playing. This plague mask video is now pretty infamous. It lasts two minutes exactly, and shows a hooded figure standing relatively still while the camera moves, skips and flashes. The figure is in an abandoned building in the middle of what seems to be a woodland, and there is a lot of graffiti on the wall. There are also a bunch of small flashing messages and hand gestures, coupled with another extremely distorted and disturbing audio track. Take a listen. Pretty unsettling, right? Well, there seems to be much more to this than meets the eye. Partway into the video, the unknown person looks into the bottom right corner of the screen where drawings of angles are switching between each other like some sort of cryptic sequence. Shortly after, a set of dots and lines appear in the opposite corner of the screen. During the video, the figure looks into a blinking light in his hand which seems to be conveying some sort of pattern through the blinks and shows the person in a few different poses before the video abruptly ends. And that was it. Imagine receiving that out of context in your mail. Well, it was the tech reviewers that first brought the attention to the mystery, but the first instance of this video emerging was some five months earlier on the 9th of May 2015 when the video was posted to the paranormal message board of 4chan. That same day, the video was posted to YouTube as well, uploaded by a shady user named AETBX. It's quite likely that AETBX was the 4chan poster, but you cannot rule the possibility out that he might have re-uploaded the video to draw attention to himself. AETBX's uploading was certainly dramatic. Its title and description were both written in binary numbers, which translated into Spanish. The title, quite predictably, translates to Murta, which means death, and the description is slightly more eerie, translating to Te queda un ano menos, which means you've got one year less. It is creepy, but it has all the components for a generic internet mystery designed to drive fear into people for attention, and it worked. AETBX's upload now has been viewed over 7 million times on YouTube. 
Though the poster behind AETBX has now allegedly been discovered and contacted for comment, he has always maintained that he never created the video, instead claiming that he was given a DVD copy by a woman in his local park and uploaded it from there. The video was posted by someone else towards the end of September under its better known name 11BX1371, coincidentally only a couple of weeks before Gadget ZZ received the CD-ROM which displayed the same thing. This channel belonged to a man named Parker Wright, but he too denied involvement in its production. With no obvious and accepting creator or creators in sight, the internet decided to begin investigating the codes and the hidden clues in the video, and this is where they began to uncover far more depth and engineering to this mystery than had once been originally thought. A subreddit with the same name as the tech blog post was created on Reddit soon after the post went up, dedicated to solving the mystery, and progress was made very quickly. The first identified clue, which all but cleared Gadget ZZ themselves of suspicion of a hoax, was that the package, writing and stamps were not from their home country of Sweden, instead coming from Poland. Though it wasn't too much to work with, knowing Poland as the country of origin helped part of the mystery to be solved, namely where the video was filmed. After the Polish origin was determined, screenshots of the walls and graffiti from the video directly matched photographs posted of an abandoned sanatorium in the Polish region of Zofiowka in Otterbock. A sanatorium is an institution where people are treated for chronic and deadly illnesses in past times, and this went hand in hand with the plague mask and robe and bones and skulls from the DVD menu in establishing death as the main theme, though this probably already seemed evident from the original upload of the video. Those interested tried to determine if the blinking light near the beginning had any meaning, with some believing that it could be Morse code. However, to this day, no information has ever been deciphered from it. Morse code enthusiasts didn't have to look much further though, as people soon found out that the faint dots and lines that appeared in the top left corner of the screen were written in Morse code. This was translated down to reveal sequences of the base 16 binary adaptation of hexadecimal. When these hex codes were converted to denary into text, they revealed a set of coordinates and beneath it the words red lips like tenth. This was where the mystery began to attract wider attention outside of Reddit and began to gain the ear of the media. The coordinates, if followed properly, lead to the White House, the residential building of the current sitting US President of the United States of America, who was Barack Obama at the time. This location heavily implied that the words could be some kind of anagram, and indeed they were, rearranging the words to kill the president. At this point, the motives seem to have been established and a new theory that this was the work of a terrorist group planning to assassinate the president surfaced and even the FBI took an interest in discovering the video's origin and creator. With most of the visual clues deciphered, all that remained was to determine the meaning of the distorted audio. This was when an audio copy of the YouTube video was run through a spectrogram, which is basically a graphical representation of different pitches and volumes within music. We see random spectrograms all the time, but they can be digitally engineered by some means, as people soon discovered this one was. When playing the off-putting audio on an editor like Fruit Loop Studio, the audio begins to form strange shapes and spell out words, emulate images and convey different emotions, and this took the grand prize for the most disturbing part of the mystery. What's worse is that the engineering behind this was incredibly precise, precise enough to convey in-depth facial details within pitch recordings. Even if this was a hoax, the culprit was much more than a kid trying to have some fun with 4chan. The opening few seconds, where the pitch is lower, displays the words, you are already dead, moving through the middle as the audio progresses, in large distinctive letters. This went further to add to the deathly sinister theme, but what came after was a lot worse. When the video's sound changes to the higher pitched, louder buzzing sound, an image of a woman screaming can be seen. This is followed by an image of a room with a dismembered body, and another message runs atop this saying, We are the antivirus, which prompted speculation that it could have been produced by Anonymous or some other hacking group. Finally, the worst image of them all follows. It is a large, recreated image of one of the Boston Strangler's victims lying dead. The meticulous detail the spectrogram held was incredible, but terrifying at the same time. After that, the audio reaches an abrupt end at two minutes. Horrified but intrigued by the spectrogram, Johnny from Gadget ZZ decided to run a spectrogram of his own on the audio from the top level DVD menu on the DVD he received, and though not as graphic, he was presented with the image of a skull and sequences of numbers and symbols either side. 
Speculation had been spreading on the internet that this project may have been the work of a serial killer and this theory gained some traction when unsuspecting viewers believed the horrifying images shown in the spectrogram were the killer's own victims. However, the recreated images were quickly traced back to their sources. The initial screaming woman features in a scene of a horror movie called Bunny Game. The dismembered body is similar, with that scene coming from a German horror film named The Slasher. The text was obviously produced from scratch but wouldn't have been as difficult to make. As for the final image, well, we know that this is one of the Boston Strangler's victims, but while also not the creator's own victim, it's still chilling to know that the final image was an authentic dead body and not just the work of horror fantasy. By this point, the whole thing was rife with unanswered questions, speculation over the creator and web hysteria. People wanted answers, and the hype of the case proved enough to encourage the supposed creator to reveal himself. As previously stated, many theories on the identity or identities of the creators had spread like wildfire, increased only by the discovery of the codes and hidden messages. Rumours of the serial killer theory continued to gain momentum, especially as the hidden secrets were causing this theory to ring eerily similarly to the now disproven theory that the infamous I Feel Fantastic video was the making of a murderer. This quickly became redundant, especially after the images in the spectrogram were identified as cinema outtakes. Something slightly more plausible that was the most believed theory at the time was that the video was the work of a group of terrorists wanting to strike fear into the heart of the US government. Most aspects of the mystery seem to work with this theory, and terror nerves were heightened with the rising dominance of the Islamic State group in Iraq and Syria at the time of the video's viral peak. However, such theatrical stunts without actual attacks behind them were not common of the group who instead spent their previous years inciting fear through physical terror attacks. While some other US based terrorist group may not have been outside the realm of possibility, this theory was also all but debunked. The possibility of satanists, sadists and cults is always discussed when something like this emerges, but while probably not a terrorist group, the political messages don't seem to align with the expected behaviour of such a classification. Some people suspected that Gadget ZZ had engineered the whole thing as a publicity stunt, a possibility that remains viable. After all, we never conclusively ascertained where the CD came from. A picture of Polish postage in such a spurious mystery would have been understandably less than sufficient in the eyes of some of the critics. However, the site owners aren't really that suspected these days for their empathy towards their own accusers and their consistent maintaining of their innocence, not to mention that a number of external factors they seemingly had no control over that have happened since. This leaves us with two of the most likely suspects, the original posters of the video, AETBX and Parker Wright. AETBX has always maintained his park bench story, but details of his testimony are hard to come by, and he has never provided any proof of the CD he claimed to be given, and as such, this is an unlikely story. He's also, despite denying responsibility, tried to benefit from the attention he gained as a cryptic channel, posting three more low-level cryptic videos on his channel ever since, however none of these are anywhere near the level of complexity or depth the original video was. And so it is likely that AETBX is either an alter ego of the much more likely suspect Parker Wright, or he is simply just an opportunist trying to benefit from his own hype. Which brings us on to Parker himself. Though he initially denied involvement on social media, he has since claimed responsibility by doing an interview with a Polish YouTube channel on the 3rd of March 2016. The interview, which took place in an anonymous location with Parker's face protected, saw him put on the plague mask which looks similar to the one that was used in the video. He also claims to be an artist, doing it for the sake of art, which seems to be an excuse to get away with any kind of extreme stunt nowadays. His nationality might also lend credibility to his cause, seeing as he speaks in an American accent but lives in Poland, which would give him ties to both the location of the video and the presidential target. And so, it seems that Parker probably is indeed our culprit. His details add up, his story checks out, and his circumstances seem legit. He hasn't dwelled much on how or why the CD was sent to Gadgets ZZ, but he has claimed responsibility for the raw footage itself, and it's likely he was the actor in the sanatorium, so it should be a case closed. Ironically, Parker's confession hasn't benefited his social media presence that much. His upload of the video on YouTube has over 4 million fewer hits, and his channel has also fewer subscribers than AETBX. In an attempt to prove to people that he was the artist he claimed, on December the 31st he uploaded a so-called part 2 on his channel, named 11B31369. This video has the same creepy setup and similarly rural and shady location. He's also wearing the same costume and even has the same distinctive blinker in his palm. The video is also littered with flashing words and cryptic codes like in the former. 
In this video, a second person appears as well, a deformed looking woman, potentially an associate who may have been filming in the last video. But this video actually had a negative impact on his channel for one reason, the audio. The creepy spectrogram was the most famous and infamous part of the last video, but this part too lacked audio authenticity. Instead of a creepy dragging assault on the ears, a more quiet monotone pip can be heard, which conveys little to no information. Followers of the now well-known mystery were disappointed, sceptical and making claims that Parker was an imposter. Some believe that, even if Parker is responsible, there must be some form of team in the background that remains hidden, as the original project would have been just too much work for one person to pull off, with such expertise in every area. Whatever the case, it does appear that the part 2 is trying much too hard to be cryptic, and following the criticism it was deleted from the channel. But just over two years ago now, he uploaded a new project named 110A30213. This time, the plague mask and robe didn't make an appearance, but Parker's now established editing style featured and seemed to drive the political messages a lot harder, depicting a soldier speaking Polish, with one of the lines translating to, the only way to control people is to lie to them. I would know, I am your commander and you are my army of stupid people. It seems to closely resemble the speeches of Adolf Hitler, but still has a relevant message in this day and age. By now, it's probably a safe assumption that Parker is the creator of the original clip sent to Gadget ZZ, and he seems to want to convey obscure and unnerving political messages. However, his newer projects seem a lot more forced in an attempt to ride the mysterious wave he created with his original work. 11BX1371 caught on and went viral, as most viral mysteries do, but lightning doesn't strike twice. Parker will now just have to look back on his first piece as his crowning achievement and one of the most famous internet mysteries of the last decade and one of a select few deemed significant enough to actually gain media attention.